Hi and welcome back and Happy New Year to all of my viewers and subscribers and thank you all for for coming back here and watching and welcome if you're new. So I want to do a review of some Italian acrylics. It's the brand My Mary and I got some uh, of the professional watercolors there called My Mary Blue and those are awesome. So when I saw these in my local art store, I had absolutely no qualms with uh, picking up three tubes of this and take home to, to test. I started out with the primary colors, yellow, magenta and cyan. The two of them are the, the magenta and cyan is labeled as primary. I didn't go for their primary yellow because that was a two pigment uh, paint so I picked up the lemon yellow instead because that was a single pigment yellow that was the only sig single pigment yellow they had at home at the time there was quite a few colors sold out so the I don't want to talk so much about prices because they vary a lot depending on where you pick them up even in this country so but I'd say they came at a very reasonable price these are 75 milliliter tubes and they're produced in Italy I believe there's 72 colors in the whole line and they got some neon colors and some metallics as well. Um, I haven't gotten any of those so I can't tell you how they are. But these three were, were good. Now this is a, a lemon yellow and it's quite green. So the oranges it made with the magenta wasn't fantastic. But I like the paint. So um, recently I got three more tubes and the reason why I get them in sense of three is because they they have a, a price deal on when you take three you get a rebate so I went and I got a permanent yellow deep which is another single pigment yellow but it's a much warmer yellow than the lemon yellow and I got a permanent red medium also a single pigment one the light fast oh and I got the burnt sienna um, the burnt sienna is the synthetic iron oxide PR 101, which is you see more and more in the earth tones. It's kind of weird because the old-fashioned pigments they used to use for them are good enough, but hey. Anyways, um, they are the light fastness is kind of medium for the yellows and the reds, except for the magenta here that is good, and the sign is good, and. Uh, and she had nice high, but I haven't seen any any low light fastness colors, uh, not in your the regular paints at least. I don't expect their neon colors to be light fast at all because neon colors just sadly isn't. Um, they are all, except for the burnt sienna, labeled as half opaque or semi opaque, and that is true enough. Um, they um, they are not super opaque, and I'll swatch them out for you. They're nice and soft, and they they spread out quite nice and easily. But you see that that can't cover this black at all. Um, so that is something to be aware of. This is not a problem for me because I. I'm used to working with watercolors that does this, so um, it's not an issue for me, but it's something to keep in mind if you you're, if you want to paint with them. They are not very opaque, and it's very difficult, at least with the yellow there. That was uh, I have a painting I'll show you later on, and it was quite difficult because I, I was being a little messy with my base layer. and. That caused a lot of fixing later on because I was painting the base layer as if the paint was more opaque and as it was turned out to be. See, the other yellow is also, I'd say they are more tr semi transparent than they're semi opaque because uh, they're not opaque at all. But they have a very bright color to them that I really like. And I on purpose went for single pigment colors because uh, 
as I like to, to mix my colors myself, uh, multiple pigment colors can sometimes give results that is not what I expected. There's nothing wrong with the other uh, colors. Uh, I wrote down somewhere, I think there's about 20 or 25 of all those colors that are single pigment. Then there's some dull pigment and there are some that are mixed with white and some that are mixed with black. And, uh, if you like that, there's nothing wrong with that. Just go and have a purchase what colors you like to paint with. It's a very personal choice. Some people mix colors a lot, others don't. And those who don't might like to buy something that is close to what they want right out of the tube. So all the reds are really, I'd call them semi-transparent really. And here's the blue. I only bought one blue because uh, this is a phthalo blue and phthalo blue is very adaptable in color mixes so I didn't feel I needed another one. I might go and get the ultramarine blue at some point. This is also not very opaque. Try to clean my brush off here. And here's the burnt sienna. That is very opaque. So. I think I have a nice set and I didn't buy any black and I didn't buy any white and that is because I got lots of white I got amongst other things this tube I know it's from a different brand it's from Vallejo and it's a studio acrylic but it serves the purpose and I don't really want too many duplets in my paint collection especially since I don't paint a lot of acrylics um, and this collection here actually mixes nicely. I have to wash this brush now. Sorry. It was a little bit too dirty. You can only wipe it off so much. It works better with oil. Okay. I hope this is cleaner. Good. They mix really nicely, both on paper and on the palette. So, here's some nice green colors for you. The phthalo blue with the primary sign as it's labeled. I'm still trying to clean all that green out of my brush. It goes a little slower with acrylics, <laughs> watercolors. Let's try the other yellow here and try and see the greens that that makes. And it's kind of a very golden dark green. A little bit yellowish. Or, or, or. Yeah, yellow is a bit golden, but it's a little more muted. But more natural than the other green. Olive green was the word I was looking for. Very nice colors. And they dry quite flat as well. Which is something I think is good because I paint on paper. So let me show you that my orange issue here. Because that that is too too much in one direction and this is too green and that is too red so I did make an orange but not a fantastically bright one um, and that was why I went and got this yellow instead Let's see much brighter 
orange here. So, and now what was added? I I did I actually bought this red a little bit in the blind because I had no idea what to expect, but that makes a great orange as well. Now I'm running out of yellow here. Well, we got more paint. <coughs> but I think these colors, they, they, they're very vibrant and as I layer them, they, they, they get a really nice depth to them. So... But there's not a ton of pigment in here, which was also reflected kind of in the price. They dry um, quite matte, which is good for me because I use them on YouTube videos. And if you watch my Ateza what, uh, acrylic review, you would know that they dry really shiny and that makes it a little bit difficult with the lights and the cameras and stuff for the YouTube. It's not a real life problem, it is a YouTuber problem. <laughs> so, yeah, we should try the Sienna here and see what that does with some yellow. And as expected, that gives kind of a more golden, golden red. This actually comes out almost looking like a quinacridone gold. That warm yellow here and uh, now we've got a little bit of the red in there. Wow, that's a very nice mix. So let's try and make some violets. It's too much water then. I think that's still brown in my brush. <laughs> but it uh, it does make quite a nice violet. Oh, the only problem about painting on paper is that acrylics dry fast already, but on paper it goes even for faster. So here is like it, it gives like a plum type purple these two, the, the primary blue and the permanent red. Yeah, um, acrylic dries so fast on, on paper, it can sometimes be a little bit of a, a problem. You have to paint fast if you paint on paper or use a retarder. I just don't have one or I do, but I don't want to pull it out. So let's see. Need some more blue. Over there, some magenta. Oh, I like you forgetting how strong that blue is, but that gives a much more reddish and brighter mixture. How red it becomes depends on how much paint you, red paint you put in. Oh, wrong one. No, red. I don't know. Magenta isn't really red, but that's what I call it because I'm old school. See. And I'll leave that to dry a bit so you can see it better. Gosh, it looks horrible dark on, on my camera. I hope it looks better on your screen. So when you paint with these, if, if you're used to watercolor, that won't be a problem. If you're used to very opaque colors, you might have a little bit of a problem. 
because you can't paint over dark colors as with the light colors as you would expect. Um, this one is already kind of dry, so I'll pick up some of the yellow. It uh, you can put some on, especially when it's half dry as it is here. But as you see, the the purple underneath shines through. Um, it will take a lot of layers, and I tried a lot of layers on my test painting, and it it's the dark still kept on coming through uh, even after quite a few layers. So if you if you want to put something lighter on something darker mix some white in it or paint the area you want lighter white first and then put your color on top um, because uh, because of the transparency it's really difficult to put a lighter color over a darker you can use it as a glaze um, so if you just want to like take this this brown you maybe think it's too dark you can add a layer of yellow on top and, and pull the the color more towards a, a more yellow color so how you like this depends on what type of a painter you are i don't mind it i just didn't take it into consideration when i first tested them out so um but i really really like the the colors of these and how they mix in together they're very soft, so they, they're easy to put on the painting, and if you add just a little bit of water, it, it gets fluid enough so that you can you can um, make fairly small details with it as well. Which is something I can sometimes find difficult with oil painting and, and with acrylics too if, it, if the paint is too thick it is really difficult to to make small details without having to i want to say water it down but that's not what I, of course i do because yeah you can water this down but you can't or of course um unless well there's no of course anymore in any art mediums because the oil comes in water soluble forms as well so and mix some stuff together and you get a quite a decent black so it's very versatile I'm very happy with these six I, I don't really need any any more colors maybe a white to test out the white at some point but I have a whole big tube of white to use up first so um, this far I've enjoyed them quite a lot um, and, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of mixing a little bit here, trying different things out. And see that that is already dry to touch up there, the brown sienna and the burnt sienna. Well, it's a little bit too sad because I didn't try it with the blue quite yet. Some blue, some sienna. Yeah, that comes out nice and dark as I expected. It's not quite the same color you get as when you mix those two uh, or, or the burnt sienna with uh, ultramarine, which is one of the classic way to make a, a gray or a black, but it's close. I'll try and add some white to check it out. Um, the Mimeri paint doesn't have any odor at all. Uh, you might wonder why, and that is actually because I just remembered because the Vallejo has a slightly perfumed odor to it. It's not unpleasant, but if you're a smell sensitive the Vallejo might irritate you. So yeah, mixed with some white you get a, quite a neutral cold grey here. 
you can warm it up if you add more red than you add blue so get a good range of grays there and if you just mix them directly together they turn almost black and if it's not black enough just add a little bit of yellow to it and it goes this dark so um and you can of course paint dark over light that covers nicely especially if you got the burnt sienna in there so if you come across this paint i can highly recommend it i find it very enjoyable to to paint with yeah and then i'm just trying to squeeze the last paint out of the brush before i try and rinse it out um, put this to one side and show you the test painting I did. I didn't want to do anything super serious so I did kind of a, a fantasy rooster here and um, here you can see that I painted the, the green of the tail in too far on the body and I tried to cover it up with orange and there's five or six layers at least here and it's still the green still shine through um, up here I um, I have put some some white edges on here because on the comb I painted the the red over the the blue of the background and that made a, a dark rim all around the comb but I have put some white down and put some red on top so now it, this part looks okay and now I was just trying to see how much highlights I could do and it, the brush was too big. Um, the transparency was really nice in the grass because it it made things glaze over each other and make all these different shades of green. And because it was uh, it's a matte paint, oh, crap, my, um, it dries quite matte, even with lots of layers. I put that black line outline on, and it wasn't because it needed it. It was a curiosity thing from my side. And I used a, a pit pen, a fine pit pen from Faber-Castell to outline it. And that worked quite nicely as well. So, yeah, I have nothing bad to say about these paints they come in different uh, tube size and this is the smaller one the 75 there's I believe a hundred and twenty and a half liter jug and um, they got a, a um, professional line too that's called Brera I don't know if that's pronounced right uh, and I haven't tried that I'm just mentioning it they do make professional paints as well but for beginners and for definitely for painting on paper, uh, it is good. I think this could be very interesting to, to use as a mixed media paint because it, sh it, it dries up this matte. I have not tried colored pencils on here. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. I'll pause the camera and bring some. So I am... Um, I took the polychromos because that's used by a lot of people. I'll take a dark red, um, purple, just to see. Now, my experience with um, colored pencils on acrylic is medium to low. It is absolutely not one of my favorite combinations. Um, it can be done on matte paint yeah you can do it but I don't love it I can really feel all the brush strokes in the paint so you have to make sure to paint it really quite flat if you don't like that I don't I, it feels bad And you, you can add a touch to it, but it's definitely, I got this feel that it's not something I can do a lot of. I'd say it is only if you really need some 
a little bit of shading here and there maybe some some detailing like if we needed some fine details on the beak here you can do it but I, I, it's not something I would do a whole lot of to be quite honest but it, it can be done it can't be done so thumbs up from me for my mirror acrylica acrylico absolutely I I love the colors of, of this rooster the, my painting technique and all that we can discuss um, but but I really lo love how the colors came came through on on this one it was a lot darker on the face and, and stuff than I had planned but it was I was just playing around and it things got darker and darker and I decided to stop before it became a black rooster um, so yeah awesome paints I love these I'm definitely gonna keep them in my inventory for the future I might buy more colors over time to just to try some of the other ones out but uh, absolutely if you see them uh, and you want matte transparent acrylic get them if opacity is a thing for you you might be a little challenged with these ones thanks for watching Bye.